So the tobacco in here is a Braganca tobacco, which comes from five different regions. Uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, the Amazon rainforest. Um, what's going on guys? It's Brad here with Brad Cigars. Today we are smoking the CAO Amazon Bison. So let's uh, cut this bad boy and let's get into it and see what it tastes like. Nice clean cut. We are using the XR straight cutter. Um, so as I mentioned, we are smoking the CAO Amazon Basin. This does come from the Amazon rainforest. It takes about uh, three years to produce a cigar like this. That's why they make limited boxes of 1,500 to 2,000 boxes only released per the year that they make it. Um, they made 2016. The next time they made it was in 2020. The 2020s that were released, um, there's not as much of those due to the fact that they had the wildfires and the severe drought that they had. So there was less crop this year. These are not traditionally made where they're playing out in a field in a row. They are hand-picked seeds and they are selected and put in the ground by growers in specific spots so that they can be in the rainforest but also get the natural sunlight at the same time. So once this tobacco is picked it sits and cultivates for four to six weeks. Once it's done with that it then gets put into a canoe and paddled up the Amazon River to the trucks that then take it to the factory. So by time from picking to the time it gets to the factory, it takes about six to eight weeks. All right, so off the initial draw, you definitely get a pepper taste. It is also a little um, bit of zesty and it definitely tastes like a mixture of dark and milk chocolate so like a medium chocolate um, so you are tasting the chocolate and uh, peppery spices um, let's light it up and see if those flavors continue or what other flavors we get so. So off the initial draw, you definitely still do taste that peppery flavor. Um, the pepper is there. You get an aftertaste of a chocolate. Um, it's definitely not like a milk chocolate, but it's definitely not a dark chocolate. It is somewhere in between. Um, that might be because you get some earthy notes in there as well, which may... Um, Add a little bit of the flavor to the chocolate that you're tasting. Um, that is very good. For some reason that. Litterland didn't get bit. Burn. Well, we will see how it goes, but this is the construction of it so far. Um, 
It's got the signature four wraps, um, which is very nice. Gives you uh, something to hold on to. It's very different than the regular traditional band. Um, I do like it. It's, it gives a interesting touch to it. it you know, it makes it something about a conversational piece. Um, I will be interested though to see what happens once we get down to that point in smoking this cigar. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll catch you guys in a few. As I did forget to mention, this is a 6x52 cigar. Um, so with it being a 6x52, it will take a little bit of a longer smoke. I'd say it's probably going to be like an hour and a half smoke. Um, we will find out. I will take my time smoking this. Obviously, as this is a limited release, and I only have this one and another one, um, so I'd like to enjoy this one as much as I can. I, um, this is a cigar you can never buy again. Um, they do make different years, but obviously every year, just like wine and anything else, that is harvested um it will have a different flavor every year and a different flavor profile um even the smoke is just like a nice zesty creamy light smoke you know it's not a big thick overpowering smoke which is nice The Retro Hal, you uh, can definitely taste the pepper um, with the earthy tones as well, which is very nice. Um, overall, this is a good cigar so far, getting into it. Um, I'm only a couple minutes in. The construction's holding up well. The wrapper's holding up well. Um, the wrapper is nice and firm, uh, very oily, um, so you know this cigar is at the humidity it needs to be at. Um, so I'll check back with you guys in a little bit and see what's going on. So as we get into this cigar a little bit more, um, you are tasting um, the pepper note. It is a mixture between red and black pepper. Um, more of a red pepper than a black pepper, though, I would say. Um, you do start to get a little bit of a oaky flavor to it. As well as... Um, you can taste on the retro hal. You do get a slight taste of... Subtle taste, I would say of raisin so far all together the sticks holding up very well um, as I would expect it would um, it is a nice cigar you can see we're still just only a little bit in skin into it still got quite a ways to go um, but yeah that creaminess the oak flavor um, the little bit of raisin with cinnamon starting to come out um, which is nice um, obviously you will start to get a lot of different flavors as this is um, a blend of five tobaccos so as you're burning it and as it's burning you will start to taste different tastes and your palate will sense different changes in the tobacco when you are smoking this cigar which is a nice feature um, I do like these wish I could get some more 
or probably should have got some more when they came out but I didn't know how they were and I'd hate to be sitting on cigars for four or five years and they taste horrible and my palate doesn't like them so I usually pick up limited releases I'll pick up two or three of them just so I can try one and then if I do like it I have another one for later on or one if a buddy wants to have one and um, I know his palate and what he likes um, then I will be able to help them and assist them giving them one of these limited release cigars um, which I don't mind doing um, it's not a problem as I do enjoy smoking them as equally to introducing uh, my friends and fellow cigar aficionados to uh, new sticks that they've never tried before giving them a insight of what they will taste what they will taste like what they should expect um, so they can get the full flavor out of the cigar and know and sit down and have a relaxing time knowing that this is a stick that they'll enjoy because um, sometimes it does you know get maybe a little overwhelming for some people there is a lot of different cigars out there and how do you know if you're grabbing the right one or not I mean some people would hate to go to a cigar lounge grab a $10 stick you know maybe a $12 $13 stick and sit down and light it up and say oh my goodness this is horrendous this is horrible and you just wasted $13 on a stick for you trying to sit down and enjoy yourself and you did nothing to that and you just spent your money and you leave yourself having not a good time or a good experience with cigars and if that's your first time it probably would be your last so that's why if you are a new smoker um, I would suggest that you do figure out what kind of flavors you do enjoy um, you know if you like coffee maybe you know go to your local tobacconist and go in there and tell them what you like if you like coffee Tell them what kind of coffee you like. They can be able to, these guys are experts, and they can be able to assist you in giving you a couple different picks to figure out what you like. You know, maybe you like coca, or you say, hey, I'm not a pepper person. I hate pepper. I don't want to taste anything that has pepper. So then they can steer you in the right direction so that you can get a cigar that doesn't have those flavors in it. Um, so do use that. Um, that is one of the least used people in the cigar world um, a lot of people guys are afraid to ask questions we're afraid to ask for directions anywhere we're afraid to ask stuff but if you want to be able to enjoy yourself and you don't know this information either a you need to look it up before you go and do some research or when you get there you need to just ask a question and say hey, look at you know I'd like some help um, I also sometimes will go to a cigar lounge I've never been to before walk in the humidor and uh, the kind clerk that's there says hey can I help you instead of saying no you know I'll spark up a conversation maybe I'll tell them hey these are the cigars that I like I'd like something like that but it's different what do you have here I don't know what their selection is and I'm not gonna spend six hours looking to figure out what cigar I want to smoke because they've got hundreds of thousands of cigars in there you know they're the ones that stock it they know what they got so use them to your advantage it does help out guys sometimes asking for help can be very helpful in situations like this so the uh, peppery on that one the pepper has started to fade away it's more turning into uh, oak and cinnamon flavor, which is very nice. Um, it's definitely a different change. You still do get those earthy tone notes in here. Um, we still have not ashed yet. Um, probably got a, say, an inch and a quarter of ash maybe on there um, so let's see how far we can go without ashing this cigar it'll be very interesting it'll be interesting to see when it falls off and how it falls off um, 
So stick around, I'll be right back in a few. Hey guys, we're back. We're getting down there. Um, still has, it's got the oak flavor still there as well as the um, cinnamon with the earthy tones. Um, it's pretty much started to stay the same. It's mellowed out. All the pepper flavor is gone. Um, which is not bad. We'll see if it comes back. Um, the ash did fall off. Probably at um, inch and a half. The ash fell off. Um, so we have started to create a new ash. Um, still got a very smooth draw. It's not a hard pull. Um, the smoke is very light and creamy. Um, the retro hail on this is very nice. Um, overall, the cigar is still holding up fairly well. Um, like I said, I am interested in to see what happens once we get up here to the um, tobacco rolled band, which is something very different. Never had one of these before, so I'll have to see what happens with that. Um, so you can see the end is not wet. Um, I do not like to stick it in my mouth or get the end wet. I feel like when you get it wet, everything just gets all soggy. Um, so I do try and keep the top um, where I cut the cap off dry. Um, I don't know, it's just my preference. Um, I'm sure there's other people that got different opinions. Um, but that's what I like. So uh, Do remember though, when you are smoking cigars, do make sure you have a beverage around, whether it's pr probably, preferably water. Um, I mean, a lot of people do, and myself included, like to uh, have a cigar, sip on a uh, beverage, you know, an adult beverage, a cocktail, um, just bourbon on ice, whiskey, tequila, whatever you like, um, vodka. Um, but as cigars do, when you are smoking it, um, it will dry out your mouth. So you do need to keep hydrated um, as well. That's an important factor. Um, I have known a lot of some people before that don't drink anything. And they just smoke and smoke and smoke. And they will get nauseous. Um, it'll make them feel like they're going to throw up. Um, it's because they've dehydrated themselves. Um, it has nothing to do with the cigar or you don't like cigars. You just currently are not taking care of your body um, in the current state that you're in. So do uh, remember to stay hydrated. That's a very important factor. Um, cigars, they don't have a time when they're not supposed to be smoked. Um, they are great for business meetings, lunches, dinners, after dinner. Um, they're good with your morning routine if you have enough time. I can tell you that I certainly do not have enough time in the morning to sit down and smoke a cigar with a coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, but if you guys do, like I said, with hot chocolate, um, that's what I drink in the morning sometimes or nothing. Um, but maybe on the weekend I probably do. I could have to figure out time to go out and have a breakfast smoke. I don't. I prefer to smoke in the afternoons, mid-afternoon. You know, about that time when you uh, just ain't that big lunch and you uh, start to get sleepy at your desk around like 2 o'clock. Um, that's when I prefer to come out and have a cigar. 
um, or definitely after dinner. It's a good time to have a cigar. I do like having cigars after dinner as well, especially if I've just had a nice steak um, or something that will complement the cigar that I just ate. Um, don't recommend going in and mowing down on some chicken alfredo and coming out here and having a cigar. Um, that's just my thoughts in two cents. But um, oh, maybe if you like if you like that, I don't know, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. Um, but it is still creamy. Uh, you still get that raisin in there as well, raisin, uh, earthy tones, a little bit of cinnamon. Um, overall, it's well. Um, I have changed the bar around. I was able to, as you could have seen in the beginning, um, the new fridge is here. Um, I just put the barrel next to the fridge. Um, and I did cut in the humidor, cooler door, wind door, or whatever you want to call it, the new air, um, which heats and cools. Um, they, this is obviously the, I have the, uh, second version. Um, there is new versions out now that actually have the digital, um, hydrometer in it instead of the. Uh, analog that looks like an old-fashioned clock in here um, but this was the first one that was ever a heat and cool at the same time which is nice um, obviously the garage is starting to get insulated but obviously we're still out in the elements a little bit um, so when it is cold it does get cooler in here when it's warm it does get a little warm in here um, I am working on getting Hopefully, maybe an air conditioner out here during the winter. We'll see. Right now, I do have the um, propane fire pit out here. So, that does keep it um, warm. I would just shut the garage door, cut it on for half hour. Um, at night, it just stays on all the time when we're out here because it does throw off some nice heat. So, when we're hanging out here, um, nighttime with friends drinking, uh, watching sports on TV or watching the movie sent out here um, it does do that it takes the chill off which is nice um, so I just got to figure out something to do for the summertime which I will work on that but that's why the heating and cooling um, was very important to me so that I could keep the humidor at a consistent temperature um, I also do have the Bovita Butler so it does work off Bluetooth. You can get the app on your phone so that it will notify you when your cigar humidor is either too high in temperature, too low in temperature, or too high in humidity or too low in humidity um, so that you can keep your cigars perfectly humid. Um, typically that is 70 and 70 is what I like to keep it at. Um, because there is, you do got to worry about cigar beetles and everything else like that. I have never had that. Um, thank gosh, knock on wood. Um, also, no cigar beetles, no mold, none of that. So, knock on wood that that doesn't happen. Um, I will be very upset. But I do check the cigars um, very often. Obviously, I do smoke a couple times a week. So, I am in there rotating cigars around, looking at what I want. Um, checking out different stuff so I do um, get in there quite often so if I was to catch something hopefully I could catch it before it got the whole collection um, I have not posted yet what is all in the humidor um, the list that I've made on a Excel spreadsheet um, I will try and figure out how to post that in here um, so that you guys can see that hopefully I can tag it in this video um, but if not, maybe I'll just add it in a link below as like a Google document thing that you guys can look at. Um, if you'd be interested in checking it out, uh, put it in the comments so that I can add it to the next video or make a video about it or just put it in the Google documents. 
whichever I can figure out how to do. Um, but other than that, you know, we're getting down on the cigar. Um, so I will check back with you guys in a few minutes. Alright guys, we are back. Um, we are definitely getting down to the end. It has started to burn a little unevenly, um, which does happen. Um, I was busy doing other things, not paying attention. So I did let it get away from me. But um, probably once I get to that band up there, I'll just stop. There will be only a little bit left. Um, the flavor profile has definitely gotten more mild. Um, just earthy tones and a little bit of oak is what you taste all that's left. Um, this was a very enjoyable stick. I'm glad I decided to uh, smoke it today and give it a try. Um, I will definitely be buying more of these when they have other releases. To be able to compare these to see what was different in this one compared to other ones. Um, I do take notes. I do have a book that I write stuff down in. Um, that I formatted a sheet. I've taken a bunch of different information that other people have had in their books and kind of created something that was my own and different um, so that I could write down everything that was simpler for me. Wrote down the key stuff and the important things. Um, I don't know. Do you guys write in a cigar journal? Have a cigar journal? Do you take pictures or notes? Um, what do you guys do to remember what the cigar was, how you liked it? Um, what's your rating system? Is it on a scale of 1 to 10? Or do you do what the regular... Um, regular. <laughs> what is regular nowadays? Anyways. Um, on the 0 to 100 scale, um, where each individual thing gets 25 points, look how it looks, the construction, the taste, and um, then overall. Or do you just put everything together and just mesh it all and just say, hey, this was an 8 out of 10, this was a 9 out of 10, this was a 2 out of 10. Um, and if you had a 5 out of 10, would you smoke it again? What's your limit on where you have a cigar and say, Hey, I don't like that, and I'd probably not smoke one again. Mine would probably be, if it was a three, I'd probably not smoke it again. Um, or if it was like a, if it was less than 50, I wouldn't smoke it again. Um, just because there is so much more cigars out there, um, you know, with all these boutiques now that are coming out with cigars, there's just so much on the market. Why limit yourself to try a cigar that you didn't like? But at the same time, maybe it was just that day. Maybe you ain't something that changed your palate, so maybe you might want to try it again. There's that flip side of the coin, too. Um, but I like trying new things. I like trying new cigars. Um, I do, obviously. There's ones that are in there that I do like and enjoy that are more of the big name brands. That when you pick one up, you know what you're smoking every time you smoke it. Um, so I do enjoy that sometimes when I'm just hanging out and don't really want to try and pick something different or whatever. I'm just going to sit down and relax. Um, don't want to have to make a decision on what I want to smoke. You've already made enough decisions in your life. Sometimes you just need to sit down and say, hey, I need the Old Faithful. So on that note, guys. This is the end of the cigar review. Hopefully you've enjoyed as much as I have. Please like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's grow this channel um, so we can do awesome stuff in 2021 um, and awesome stuff beyond that. Um, there is limited potential that we can do here and I'm glad you guys are a part of it. And I'd like to be able to grow with you guys, grow our community and do a bunch of cool things. Um, so if you've got any suggestions or ideas that you'd like to see me do in future videos, 
and stuff like that, leave it in the comments. Um, hopefully we can start being able to do cigar events, go to cigar events. Um, those would be awesome to go do meet and greets, try and meet some people. Say I'm going here, you know, gather up and see everybody, talk to them. Um, it's not just me talking to you. Um, I'd love to listen to you guys as well. Um, you know, I'm always about learning and knowledge. So, on that note, stay smoky. You get a uh, nice smoke, sit down, relax, enjoy it. Um, be safe, have fun, and catch you guys on the next one and see you in the comments below.